So I have a small confession to make. This is not the first one I've had to rebuild. Uh, mine was giving me trouble, so I pulled it. I didn't pull it off the truck. I went to the junkyard and pulled one off another uh, new body style uh, CK truck. I don't know what year it was, but they all have these uh, here. And it's got a three bolt valve housing. This is one, two, and a third one on the other side. I went ahead and I uh, bought a kit and rebuilt this one, only to find out when I went to swap it in. I have a little bit beefier uh, set up with the four bolt uh, valve housing. So rather than downgrade and swap this one on, I feel like this is better. It's bigger, it's beefier. Um, I, it's called a 680, I believe. That's a 670 three valve bolt valve housing. And this is a four bolt valve housing. I, I figured I would rebuild mine. However, this is the third kit I've bought. One for the fourth, I don't know. I wrecked some pieces in these, so hopefully you learn from my lessons. This time, it's a little bit less expensive. I bought an Edelman 8927 for the four bolt valve housing. And you may be watching this halfway through the video, I don't know. I've had to uh, redo parts because I broke some of the seals. Last time I broke the Teflon ring for the Teflon seal for this piston. Um, we're gonna do it a little different way. I did a little bit more studying. I'm gonna show you some, some tricks there. So, so I'm gonna show you how to rebuild your steering gearbox. These are the two types that are in CK trucks. I have a, I have a new body style, MBS 2001 Chevy Tahoe. Uh, it's the Z71, and I guess I'd tell you the story. I thought I would buy an old gearbox at the junkyard, rebuild it, and swap it in. And then I realized I didn't have the three bolt 670 gear. I had the bigger four bolt 680 gear. So let's take a look at this really quick. This is the 670 gear. I put some, uh, I rebuilt it, and then I put some uh, hydraulic fluid in here like it takes, uh, and uh, I didn't want to leak out, so I put that tape on there. However, if we look at the end here, we have one, two, three bolts. That's what distinguishes this guy, the 670, from the larger 680. So on the 680, see here, I have one, two, three, four bolts. Otherwise, they look very similar. However, I believe that the housing is a little bit bigger for the piston. So as a smaller piston, you could you can kind of see that perhaps in this video here. If I line them up, let's set them back to back here. I don't want to edit too much. This is an exploded diagram of it too. So actually it, it didn't print too well to begin with, but yeah, that shows. And there's there's some other varieties of these as well. See how much smaller the 670 is than the 680. Um, I always wondered why my Z71 Tahoe, it turns really easily. I thought maybe I, I couldn't figure that out, but it's certainly because it has this bigger piston here than this little guy over here. Both of these are very good design. They're, they're virtually identical. The piston's just a little bit bigger and takes some uh, larger seals is all. This is a seal kit. This is from Edelman, this is 8927. That's for rebuilding this, but I've rebuilt both of these now. So I'll give you the part number below them on the, the video here. Another thing I'm gonna make note of, I wish I had the Hydro Boost brakes. They are uh, assisted with the, their brakes, they're assisted with the power steering pump, but I have the, the regular <laughs> mere mortal brakes, uh, so I, I replaced the uh, power steering pump with this job, figured I'd better. Um, very inexpensive to buy the pump and put it into the old um, uh, reservoir. So I did that. I didn't really film it. If I have some clips from that, I'll try to throw them together for you. And uh, this is gonna go in. I, I did paint the uh, reservoir while I was at it. But yeah, this should be a good project. And it's very, very, very easy if you have the right tools. So 
can save you about you know anywhere from two three hundred bucks to about six seven hundred dollars depending on which gearbox you get and there's my truck it's all uh of course it's all taken apart and just uh my little bragging rights i built my first 4l60e this is the old one wasn't broke i built a new one and put it in there and there's a mp246 transfer case i'm gonna rebuild put in there so i'll have a new truck even though it's old right Taking out the power steering pump can be tricky. You have a cross member, cross link bar, the end of the pitman arm and idler arm go into that. I'm changing the idler arm and rebuilding the whole sucker. Uh, so this is a pickle fork. I use this to get off the uh, pitman arm from the cross link. You'll want to hit that with some uh, PV blaster before you do it, let it soak. Then once you get it out, this is a pitman arm puller you may have to use some creativity to get that stubborn pitman arm off. You can take the nut off, let me show you. So this guy slides right over the end. Of course the shaft is out and it hits on the end of the pitman shaft. These little teeth grab on the back side here of the pitman arm. The nut will be off and you're gonna drive this in. Now, if you drive it in, I have an impact. If you drive this in, hard enough, it will break it. It'll break this whole thing, strip the threads off this or the, the arm and uh, it'll be sunk. So what I, I did the last time I removed one, I tensioned this pretty dang tight on the pitman arm. Then I put heat on it and I just kind of had the, the um, burner set kind of right there. And as it was heating, I tapped it with a hammer, tap, 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 and eventually it popped right off. And as I did that, I just ever so slightly uh, tightened this and tightened this and, and it worked. Otherwise, what you'll have to do is get a cutoff wheel and you wanna tape this stuff really well up here. Really, really well. Um, and you're going to cut the pitman arm. That is very intensive and a lot of work to do, but it will work that will definitely get it off. Just make sure you don't cut anything else. I may have failed to mention as well, when you do this work to get the pitman arm off, if you're rebuilding the gearbox, just remove the whole assembly with the pitman arm on it out of the truck and you'll have a lot, it'll be a lot easier to work on. So I'm a bit of a nerd, but I don't think, I don't know if you can see that. I repaint everything when I have it apart. I use Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. I hit any bare spots of metal. And then on top of that, I go ahead and I put uh, rubberized undercoating from 3M. It comes in an aerosol can. It's awesome. I use it all the time on the frame parts and wheel wells and so on and so forth. This is my new power steering pump. Preventive maintenance, I decided to change it. It's very cheap, especially if you use the old uh, reservoir, which I happen to paint gray in this case. I used engine paint with some ceramic in, in, in it to, to paint it. There's a few things you want to pay attention to. Some of the heavier duty vehicles have something called Hydro Boost. It's a brake boosting system. You'll have another line coming off of the uh, power steering pump because it uses that, I guess, somehow. I don't know how it works. Um, and then another thing, certain years have this, I want to say it's a solenoid. I'm not sure there's a electrical device in there. You got a connector and I think it helps regulate the pressure with the computer or the engine load uh, that the pump incurs. I could be wrong, but uh, it's very confusing. There's two snap rings. They'll come off the end of this and then you spin this outer nut here. What I actually had to do and forgive me if I'm crazy is I had to whack this with a hammer, a mallet a few times and that set this loose. Then this uh, nut will spin once you've removed all this electrical connector, jazz, and sensor, uh, or actuator, I'm not sure which. And it will come apart, and inside of here you have, in the bore, we'll look at the other pump really quick. Um, it's over here. I don't think it's put together. This is a plug that comes from the core. Um, hmm this pressure regulator spring, there we go, spring and uh, valve there. That goes inside of this bore. And of course we have these three little seals which come with your new uh, pump core. 
I guess, pump. This is the bracket that holds it on. I want to point out one other thing here really quick. I don't know how good the lighting will be in here. I don't have much for lighting. Looks like I did a lot of work here, right? It was way easier to disconnect the hydraulic lines, okay? And then you're gonna remove that whole bracket. Sounds crazy, but the bracket is uh, four bolts, one in the block, three in the cylinder head, comes right off. And uh, then you just a couple connectors for the uh, alternator. You got the sensor or whatever, voltage regulator, I don't know what that is. And uh, the battery and then the ground, which is right there. Where's the, well, that might be, yeah, it, it's pretty simple. I also disconnected the uh, temperature sensor outside the cylinder head there. Made life a lot easier.